So the contestants for the 2021 Elite 11 title have been announced, and we got to talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. We need to talk about the finalist, the 20-man roster that is headlined by the top nine quarterbacks in the top 247 for the Elite 11 Finals. They begin in Nashville on June 29th, and we have a bevy of outstanding quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Brock Vandegrift, J.J. McCarthy, Sam Heward, and of course, Kyle McCord out of Ohio State, or not of, out of, but committed to Ohio State. Look. I'm excited about this group of kids because we got a bunch of 4,000-yard passers. Like with Sam Heward, we're talking about two 4,000-yard passing seasons the last two years. And yes, his uncle is Brock, and his dad did play at Washington before getting into the NFL. For Oklahoma, who really hopes that Caleb Williams decides to commit to the Sooners on July 4th, this is a big deal because you want to have the number one quarterback in the class if you're Oklahoma, and with Spencer Rattler having already got that, and with Caleb Williams having all of their hopes and dreams, you really want him to win this thing at six foot two, two oh nine. He's got the tools to do it, and if you've been following him on Twitter, you can see it's snappy coming out of, out of his wrist, man. And he's making it look easy, pinpoint with the target. Brock Vandegrift is certainly capable of jumping up, though, because one of the reasons that everybody was so high on Brock Vandegrift is because he got an offer from Lincoln Riley last January and had committed to the Sooners last June. Now as Georgia commit with Todd Munkin pulling the strings, he could be pretty good. JJ McCarthy also awesome. Sam Heward is supposed to be headed to Washington, but I just want to go through the top nine quarterbacks in this 2021 cycle right quick. Drake May to North Carolina is really, I think the underdog, if you will, like if we were betting and we were trying to get the most money for our return, we'd probably go with Drake May, six foot five, two ten committed to North Carolina, where he is a legacy after having been committed to Alabama. We'll see what Nick Saban has to say about that later. J.J. McCarthy committed to Michigan. Uh, Tyler Buchner, who is committed to Notre Dame. Kyle McCord, I mentioned Ohio State. Caden Salter, best dual threat quarterback in Texas, not named Jalen Milrose or Demetrius Davis. And then there's Demetrius Davis, who is committed to Auburn. And I think that's going to be fun in a couple of years because he's going to be there with, you know, well, some dudes, one in which is Kayla Newton, that is Cam Newton's little brother, Eli Stowers, who is committed to AM, Jalen Milrow, who is committed to Texas. There are some people that are going, how is Jalen Milrow not a top five quarterback, if not challenging Caleb Williams for the number one spot? And I can see it from, I mean, his tape, him and Katie Thompson, Katie Tompkins is a big deal. Miller Moss is also here. Baron Morton is also here. I mean, Miller Moss being committed to SC along with Jake Garcia. So that's that's number 13, number 14 quarterbacks in the top 247, both committed to SC. Yikes. And then Ty Thompson at Oregon is also in this rounded out this top 15. Preston Stone, I think, is going to be the best group of five prospect that, well, anybody's going to see. And they seem to agree as well with him committed to SMU and also being the number 16, well, yeah, number 16 prospect at quarterback. So what we know about these quarterbacks outside of how many yards they pay, throw for in high school, is that they're all going to be the talk of the town in just a couple of years' time. One of the reasons that you pay attention to the Elite 11 is because it is a great predictor of future success. Not necessarily the winners, because the winners have been real hit or miss over the last few years, but the guys that make the finals are going to be the quarterbacks of the future, not just in college, but in the NFL. You can probably pick five guys from each Elite 11 class that has turned into a Pro Bowl quarterback or at least been a first-round draft pick. And I'm excited to see what these guys have to show us as we continue to go through this. And really, the classes that they're joining, because, like, Georgia is quietly, like, really good with quality. And we all know that Kyle McCord is going to be throwing the ball to guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. And on it goes. I mean, Julian Fleming is still going to be there. Mookie Cooper, oh, my goodness, in G. But, I, look... Ohio State could be monstrous in the next couple of years. We all know this. Uh, the schools that don't have a representative that we're paying attention to, we got to mention them. Alabama, right? Because Bryce Young, 
best quarterback in the class last year. And of course, Clemson had the second best quarterback in the class last year, DJ Uyungle. And usually, you don't see blue chip quarterbacks follow blue chip quarterbacks in the same class. Well, you can, and sometimes you'll even see two, a five-star and a four-star, but we've never seen a five-star and a five-star in the same class. And we've only seen it a couple of times where the five-star follows the five-star. Kyle Allen was followed by Kyler Murray. Didn't really work out for both of them. I mean, it ended up working out for Kyler Murray once he transferred to Oklahoma, but it didn't work out at A&M. Other teams that, well, you expected to have someone really jump up and show you what they can do. Garrett Nussmeyer at LSU, very high on him, very well spoken. I enjoyed talking with him right here on this show. You can go search that in the videos, probably RJ Young, Garrett Nussmeyer to see that interview. It's real good. It's real fun. Uh, I also just want everybody to pay attention to the dual threat kids because they are, they're better than you think. I mean, Demetrius Davis, Jalen Milrow, Caleb Williams, all deserve your time. All deserve your your eyes to watch their huddle film and to really understand how good they are you have to see them throwing the ball on the run and when they throw the ball on the run they don't miss as a matter of fact I like to think that they're more accurate when they're moving now that doesn't mean that they can't plant their feet and then drive the ball because they certainly can but one of the reasons that Gus Malzahn liked Demetrius Davis is because he can launch the football and he's been one of the most exciting high school football players in the state of Texas over the last few years. Same thing with Jalen Milrow. I, I really like the idea of him being the starting quarterback at Texas. Tom Herman can hold on to his gig, and Mike Yersich's offense can work, and he can stay long enough to grow Jalen Milrow up. He's got more than a shot to be a really great quarterback in the Big 12, let alone in college football. Brock Vandegrift, I'm really interested to see how he has grown over the last couple of years because this was a guy that doesn't really get the same sort of publicity that a Caleb Williams does. He got a lot when Lincoln Riley offered him, and he got a lot more when he committed to Oklahoma. But I expected him to really push for a top 15 spot in the overall rankings. And right now, we're really just talking about Caleb Williams being among the top 10 as a quarterback. He's the only quarterback in the top 10 of a class that is loaded with great defensive line players and good corners and uh, outstanding linebackers. So we'll see if any of these guys, number one, can overtake each other, and then what kind of bearing this might have on how we evaluate the top 247, let alone the 247 sports composite. All of those things are going to be on the table as we take a look at really the only premier camp that's going to go on this summer. That's what makes this so interesting to me. Usually, we would have a look at these kids in March, April, May, and June at elite camps for, you know, college football, let alone what the uh, opening final would have been this year. This year, it's the Elite 11 in Nashville, and usually that takes place at, like, you know, Dallas, Texas, right? At the Star, not so much this year. You should also know that 247 Sports is located in Nashville, so that makes a lot more sense once you know that. I'm excited to see what they look like. I'm excited to see what guys like Barton Simmons and Steve Wiltfong and Greg Biggins, guys that I really trust in the evaluation process, have to say about these quarterbacks and how they have grown and what kind of work they've been doing in this pandemic. Because, yeah, I'm here for some football, even if it's of the 7-on-7 uh, seven seven draft eligible variety kind, like we're going to a combine to watch the kids throw. Whatever. Just give me football. All right. That's it for me. Deuces.